Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. We we'll greet you all in the name of Ahaya Ashere Ahaya and his son Yache Meshiaka and Ruach Hakodoshi, the Holy Spirit. We bless you all in the name of Elohim and we thank you all for joining with us here at Hebrew Readers Church. Um, we are going into a lesson today, a great lesson. Uh, the times are evil, avoid a reprobate mind. And seeing how everything is going in the earth today and seeing how people are acting or spirits are operating in the earth. It's only fitting to do this lesson so that everybody can prepare themselves and know what's coming ahead and also what we need to do in our journey going toward Messiah Yachi in the end times. Um, I'm your brother Zakwa, and this is your brother Kasafo. All right. And without further ado, Kasafo. All right, let's jump right into it. Can you read John chapter 14, verse 6, please? Yahweh saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, our focus here for this lesson in particular is the fact that Yache is the way. Let's get understanding what that means. Can you read the definition of the word way in the Greek as G3598, uh, Hodos? If you can read the Thea's definition, please. The Thea's definition means properly. A way, a traveled way, or a road, a traveler's way, excuse me, a road, a traveler's way, journey, traveling, metaphorically, a course of conduct, a way or manner of thinking, filling, deciding. Now, that definition really helps us understand when Yachi says, I am the way, that it, it it's detailing that he is we he is the course of conduct he is the example the behavior he is the the mindset we have to have the way of thinking where we have to feel the, the mind the decision making process that we have to operate in is all through him and this and is a course as it says it's a traveled way it's a road and it's a journey that we have to go through to attain unto his way of thinking his way of feeling his way of deciding his course of conduct. So we can understand when he says he's the way, we can know this is a journey that we're on. Can you go ahead and read the um, Strong Strong's definition. definition as well? Yes, please. Sorry, it took me a while to get that out. <laughs> okay. Apparently a primary word, a road, by implication, a process, the route, act, or distance. Notice that I think that was progress. Um, for the, what um, I you said process because you're thinking oh, okay. about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, progress. So yes. Now it said it's primarily a road. Like as Yacha is speaking, it's he is that road, that narrow path we have to go down. As we talked about what we have to do to be saved, he is that narrow road, and by implication, is letting us know it's progress. It's we build up in this route. And going the distance to get to him and also figuratively continue reading please brother figuratively a mode or means journey or highway that the definition of the word gives us understanding of him and how he pertains to this process he is the mode and means by which we can attain unto the father and this way is a process of affliction and it's actually within that leads us to him. Because remember, our hope of glory is Christ within us. So this journey he's taking us on is all uh, in a battle to overcome and attain unto the Father within ourselves so that his spirit may be with us. Can you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 38, and then also Romans chapter 10, verse 4, please? Yes. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. That's why we have to get on that same road he's on. And then that road leads us unto where, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So we as believers know that end goal of the road we're getting to is to get to Christ. Because he is the doorway unto the Father. He's working in us to bring us unto him so that 
we may become one with him and the Father, as he prayed for us in John 17. Now, even Peter, the apostle, gives us exhortation to touch back on some of his exhortations for us about how we have to actually follow after Christ's examples and follow in his footsteps. Can you read First Peter chapter 2, verse 20 to 23, please? Sure. Hey, I wanted to, to touch on something. Um, sure. Remember the definition for way and the strong definition? It says uh, a road by implication, a process. I just want to mm -hmm. I want to highlight that so that people can remember that for when we get into the word reprobate. Yeah, right. Okay, so we got to remember it's a road and by implication progress, a progress. All right. Progress, right. Did I say process right. again? <laughs> yes. I did. Yeah. I meant progress, yeah. okay? <laughs> <laughs> progress, so, good. We, you know, so you're progressing. We with you. Right, yes. You're progressing. I, I'm sorry. Okay. We rolling with you, brother. We rolling with you. <laughs> I just wanted to be processed. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For All what right. glory is it, if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? Right. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with Elohim. This is what it makes us like Yachi, yeah, because this is what he did. Continue, please. For, for even hereunto were you called. That's what we're, exactly what we're called unto. Yep, sorry. Are you okay? that's, that's what we're called unto. So we know when, when we're doing what we're called to do is when we're doing the right thing, and we get reproached for it, or we get treated ill for it, and we still take it patiently and don't react in the wrong way. We don't render evil for evil. That's a good guidance for us as we build in the faith and examine how we operate and how we react to things to gauge whether we're coming onto the calling or going in the wrong direction in this process. Progress. <laughs> Continue, please. <laughs> but if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with Elohim. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Now, interestingly also, he did it for us. And that helps us understand by partaking in what he partook in, we're also not only doing it to the glory of Elohim and to the glory of the Lord Yahshua, but we're also doing it for each other. This is a suffering we're partaking in within ourselves for the sake of the brotherhood. So we can have encouragement to know this fight is not just for ourselves, but it's for all, all of the children of Allah. It's for, for all to have the example of Christ to see him in us. Uh, and continue, please, to, so we can see the steps that we have to follow in. Verse 22. Who did no sin? Neither was God found in his mouth. For when Man. he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. That is our goal to get unto, to get to where there's no sin in us, where there's no guile in our mouth, where when someone speaks ill or reviles us, we don't revile back. And when we're ill treated or done wrong or, um, um, defrauded, yet we don't threaten back. That is a sign that we are committing ourselves unto Allah that judges righteously because then instead we're going to pray for our brothers and sisters. So that's a good guide for us to know we're on the right road. We're heading down the way towards our Lord and our Allah And Paul understood this progress and process of affliction as well. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, please. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we have to continue and don't get weary in doing, giving the right response, not rendering evil for evil, staying meek in the midst of a, a prideful situation or a heated situation. If we continue, we will reap reward if we don't faint. Continue, please. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them 
who are of the household of faith. All right. We do the good unto all, and even more so when it's to those that actually believe in Yache. So we do things without partiality, so we have to be good unto everyone, not just those that believe on Yache. All right? Uh, and in the midst of doing good unto others, we also have to make sure we're doing good within ourselves and bringing our, keeping ourselves in subjection to the obedience of Christ, lest we be cast away. And as we read before in Romans, in 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, uh, in 20, yeah, 9, chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. I said Romans, I apologize. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, at least by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now that is, it's always good to build on the scriptures. We've touched on this scripture before. We talked about how he's not beaten against the air because he's fighting the spirits within himself. It's a spiritual battle that we're going through. It's not carnal. And he, of course, keep, we keep our body in subjection. We, keep, we resist the lust of the flesh. And also to add on for edification today, where he says, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself shall be cast away. That preaching, as we know now, those have been following on, our preaching is by our walk, our That's good right. deeds, our, our speech seasoned with salt you know, bearing the fruits of the spirit. That's our preaching. So as we were talking about doing well, not reviling, not rendering evil for evil, that's the preaching we're doing unto others. And in the midst of that, we also don't want to be cast away. So that lets us know it has to be inward and outward. We can't act like we're treating others well while we're thinking the wrong things or feeling the wrong way inside. If we have to become a wholehearted believer from within and without, so that we won't be cast away. That's the process we're building up here in. This journey is constant. It's, it's every day, paying attention, being on God. So we have to guard our soul at all times. Can you touch 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 30 to 31, please? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I right. protest. By your rejoicing, which I have in Christ, Yahweh, our Lord, I die daily. It's constant. It's every hour paying attention to what's in front of us, what what we're thinking, what's going on within. And, right. and we're going to get shown things daily. <laughs> Something's going to get revealed that we didn't see that needed corrected. And we're right. going to die to something else. Or well, something that we already made aware of is going to manifest itself in another way so we can get better understanding of it so that we can die to it. And this is right. the process we're going through. It's and easy to the get strive right. Yeah. Yeah. Easy to get so the striving and the dying daily is through the chastening process. That's the progression that we're going through as we're being brought into subjection to the obedience of Christ through the law of righteousness. And this is where the Holy Spirit walks us through as well. We ask, so we want to have the Holy Spirit. So it's good to understand what she actually takes us through so that we can actually have her with us. Can we look at Ecclesiasticus chapter 4, verse 17, please? For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. So we see how this is how the mother operates. She gets her children in order so that they may be able to be trusted with her spirit. And that's the love Allah has for us because he doesn't want to give it to us and then we defile it. He, in his mercy and kindness towards us, he rather prepare us to be a vessel worthy of honor so that when the spirit dwells, she would not depart. This process is all uh, as she said also um, in this scripture that she's going to try us by her laws and paul even paul the apostle he had to go through this process too when he speaks so let's touch romans chapter 7 verse 12 and then verse 10 and 13 please all right romans 
chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. So Paul acknowledges all of that's holy, just, and good, because this is where was used to bring us unto righteousness. And then continue, please, let's hear how he explains his process he had to go through where he was dying daily. Continue. Uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 10. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Because it's constantly killing him. Like, ah, oh, there's another part of me that, that has to die. There's another something that I'm doing wrong that I didn't realize. This is where it's found to be unto death because it's destroying the form of man. Continue, please, verse 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Allah I am forbid. But sin, Absolutely. that it might appear mm -hmm. sin, worketh death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. So Paul was showing that the law wasn't the problem. Allah I am forbid that the law would be um, would be uh, death unto us. In in truth, it's death. It is death to our former selves, dying to the lust of the flesh. But it's not made death unto us because it's actually healing us. It's causing the light of Christ to abound in us. But the real issue that I mean, the real thing that the law actually does, it exposes sin. That's what he said, but sin, that it might appear sin. So now through the law, we can see sin clearly because that is what's working death in us by that which is good. Sin is using the law against us to cause us to fall. Right. And that's how sin is becoming exceeding sinful. With, with The process is exposing sin for what it is by the light and goodness of the law so that we can differentiate the one from the other and know what's the right thing to do and grow in this process towards Yahche. And that's why Paul encourages us furthermore, now that we're seeing it, we're getting to see how sin is exceeding sinful through the law, let, let's not let it reign in our bodies. Let's fight against it. Let's strive and stand against evil through faith, through the fruits. Touch on Romans chapter 6, verse 12 to 16, please. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Amen. Because now you're getting to know it. You can see it for what it is as you're practicing righteousness. Continue to strive. Continue, please. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Amen. But yield yourselves unto Allah as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Allah. That's the change of mind, the change of process now, because we're walking in that way. We're on that road towards Yache, towards the end of the law for us that believe, and now we're yielding to Allah. We get shown something that's wrong, we pray, we confess that fault, and move forward, fight, striving against it to get to Allah Hayyam's side so that all our things, all our deeds be done in subjection unto him. Continue, please. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Amen. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. So that's through faith, through the faith and the blood and the grace that has come through Yahshua Christ. Sin now and not have, doesn't have dominion over us. That's not who we yield to anymore. And yes, as we're grown, we might fall, but it's right. not our master. We serve a different master, so we're learning how to avoid sin now so that we can serve our Lord, Yahweh Christ, through this grace that we're in. And now, then, that we're under this grace, continue, please. What then? Shall we sin because we are, under the, because we are not under the law, but under grace? Allah, I am forbid. No way. No way, not after what Yahshua's done for us. Not after that he's given his life and shed his blood so that we can live again. All right. There's no way we can turn back because he's purged our conscience from our former sins to move forward in newness of life. No way. Continue, please. Know ye not that the whom ye yield yourself servants to obey his servants, ye are whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. 
This is the thing that Paul was showing us. Don't you know whomever you're serving, whoever's mode of character you're operating in is who you actually serve? Right. Whether unto the works of the flesh to serve Satan or through the fruits of the spirit to serve the Lord Yacha and Ahaya or Alahayo. This is what he was teaching. And now we have the dichotomy. We know the clear difference to know when we're going the right direction so that we can always get back on the right path if there happens to be a fault in our midst. This is the life that we're called onto. The way, the truth, and the life. This is the way that we're headed towards. That way of righteousness. And this is where we are to live and live through the spirit, not after the flesh. Can you read Romans chapter 8, verse 13, please? For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Amen. Notice, through the spirit, you're going to kill all the deeds of the body. But if we walk, staying in our lust of the flesh, we're going to die with that already. So we have choices in which death do we want to perform. All right. Kill the body now through the deeds of the spirit or live in the body and die through the corruption of the flesh. We thank our Lord Yahche that we have hope through him. He mortified the deeds of the flesh and put it to death through his sacrifice. And now he's working in us to put our former deeds, to put our ways of the flesh in subjection that we may live unto him, partaking in his baptism through the crucifixion within ourselves. Amen. This is, he's gracious. And in order to overcome this evil within us, we have to do it according to the law. <laughs> we have to do it according to the rules. Uh, can you read uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, please? And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. We want mastery over evil. We don't want evil sin to have dominion over us. We want to rule over it. Therefore, we, can't, we have to do it lawfully to receive the crown, to receive the end of our reward when Yache comes, to receive that crown of righteousness. Paul gives us a great example as of how we ought to be in these times. We ought to rejoice in our sufferings within and without, for the sake of the brotherhood. Can you read Colossians chapter 1, verse 24, please? Who now rejoice in my suffering for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. That's the goal we all have. Doing it for the, for the, for the love of the brotherhood, so that we all can attain and and it's it's important for us all to do it within ourselves for our soul's sake and for the sake of others because you never know how a brother or sister may be feeling and that how they can be encouraged just by you pressing forward just by you not turning back or getting discouraged as we are being shown yourself this is how we build each other up in the faith all right one sec, I gotta get back in my spot. And as that's it's, it's, it's essential for us, brothers and sisters, we have to endure the trial for each other, lest we fall into her hypocrisy and scatter the flock. We don't want to discourage brothers and sisters by not setting an example for them. <coughs> Can you read um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, please? Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may oh, also... I'm sorry, that's... I apologize, Zach. Well, that's Timothy. That's Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, Second Timothy right. chapter 2, verse 12. I think that verse 10 was the one you were starting at. And then I guess the next verse is 12. I'm seeing it right. Yeah, it's a 10, 11, and 12. All right. 2 so, right. Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Yahweh with eternal glory. 
So we are, we're like a team in this. For those of you who may have played sports, is everybody's fighting for each other. We're all fighting for the common goal so that we can all rejoice in winning the game. And that hopefully that helps when we may feel like things are rough to remember our brothers and sisters need us. We have Yache within us working, so it's not us ourselves doing it. And we also have a support group in the faith so that we so that we may continue knowing that we're doing this so that we all may obtain the salvation which is in christ yache with eternal glory continue please it is a faithful saying for if we be dead with him we shall also live with him amen that's faithful if we die to ourselves we're gonna live with him it's guaranteed so we can continue going forward Continue, please. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That's important. Denying him is to deny his character, to deny his conduct of life, his course of life, the way he operates, the way he thinks, the way he, his decision making, the way he speaks. If we deny operating like him, in the end, he will deny us. That's and we have to be very mindful that we continue in this process and not be resistant to the change that he's working in us because we we thought this is about falling into being reprobate and there are going to be those and it can happen to us if we don't endure this trial we can be thinking that we're, we're doing everything right but then when he comes in the end as Matthew 7 and 20 to 24 says we're going to be saying, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. He's going to tell us he never knew us because we denied his progress that he was working in us. We denied the process that he was bringing us through. We've tried to find our own way. We try to work our own righteousness instead of submitting ourselves to the righteousness of Allah Hayyam. This is where we don't want to be found because the kingdom is at hand. We don't want to, we want to go forward. We want to attain onto the goal of righteousness in him. Uh, we want to according to our own understanding. Right. Our own desires, our own lust. Right. We have to partake in this cross of Yache and not turn away from the affliction that is working within us lest we be forsaken by the spirit as well we don't want to lose Allah Hayyam. read Sirach chapter 4 verse 19 to 20 so we can better understand how the spirit works as well when she's taking us through this torment by her laws to try us so that she can trust our souls and she also we have to stay in it or else it would be we'll lose our hope we'll lose our salvation Continue. Go ahead, please. So I have the four, verse 19. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerns thy soul. This is essential for us. The spirit, if we forsake her way and go wrong, she will leave us and give us over to our ruin because Allah is gentle and not forceful. If we choose wrong, a path is going to be open for us. And if we choose right, we will be strengthened to do it. That's why we have to be definite to observe this opportunity. Today, while it is today, harden not our hearts and walk in this faith that Yahshua is calling us on to and beware of evil. Learn the law. Read the scriptures. Get to reading the, the letters of Paul and understanding the fruits of the Spirit. Understand the calling of mercy and forgiveness that we're, that we're called to walk on to, being long-suffering. Take the time now to learn the commandments and what's required for the Sabbaths and uh, how we eat and how we live, our manner of dressing, our manner of operation with brothers and sisters. Get the wisdom that's in the book of Proverbs on how to interact with others and, and deal peaceably amongst others. And also in the book of our Ecclesiasticus. Take the time to learn now to be on guard against all evil. And in this process, 
when something goes wrong, when there's a fault, be not ashamed when it concerns our soul to confess our fault. Confessing of faults saves us. That gives us mercy. So let's take this opportunity and be encouraged. Because sadly, there are those who can endure the process of self-reconstruction in patience and self-examination. Sadly, they, they, they can endure because they lean on their own understanding and this causes them to fall into being reprobate. And this is where our discussion is leading on to in these times because of how the days are evil and it's going to get worse. And we don't want to fall into this, so we need to understand how one can become reprobate. Well, one can, and Paul admonishes us to be mindful of this in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, please. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that, how that Yahweh Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. This is why we just talked about getting to reading the scriptures, learning the fruits, learning wisdom of the Proverbs and the book of Sirach, because we have to understand the faith to be able to examine ourselves to see if we're in it. We, this is why it's essential to learn it. And as we learn constant self-examination, because we also have to prove our own selves. We have to test how we're operating to see if it aligns with scripture. Because we know, know ye not your own selves, that Yahweh Christ is in you, except you be reprobate? If we're found reprobate, that's indication letting us know Yahweh is not in us. Therefore, we don't want to fall into being reprobate. And with that, what is the definition of reprobate? Please, dear brother, in G96, the word akimos, adokimos, sorry. Uh, the bare definition says not standing the test not approved mm -hmm. properly use of metals and coins that which does not prove itself such as as it ought mm -hmm. unfit for unproved spurious reprobate interesting that it used for metal or coins when you put metal in the fire in right. the fire you can find out whether it's actually good or not the way it comes out of the fire is going to tell what it's worth this right. is the same process that we're in that can we stand the test of the fire are we going to be approved when we come out of the fire or are we going to go into the fire and when we come out we're found not as we ought to be that's what being reprobate is, not being able to withstand the trial, the fire of affliction within ourselves, the trial of what's happening in the world. That's what being reprobate is. Reprobate happens over a course of time. One, so we have to, that's why we have to be diligent in this walk, not to think that we've got it just because we may have grown in something. But we have to stay in that fear and that meekness striving forward knowing that it can happen to any of us we can be cast off very easily if pride is found in us all right you can't think you made it just because you found out some knowledge or you found out some things that everybody doesn't know a right. lot of people they 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 look at the gospel of the of the truth at just knowing that they're israel or whatever the case may be whatever whatever it is that they may be enlightened on and from there they think that they got it just because they understand that little bit of knowledge or that, that aspect of something. Not understanding that they're literally going into a path of being reprobate because they can't see past, they can't see anything else other than that one aspect. And Paul attests to it in Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Right. Had knowledge. Yeah, even if we know the names, these are all steps toward the faith. Uh, um, steps in the faith, I'm sorry. These are all steps in the faith towards the end goal of becoming Yachin, having him formed in us. 
it's, it's just no, it's a step forward. We're still on the same road. There's no, we haven't made it to the end as yet. So we have to be encouraged and we don't want to fall into that reprobate position because we get put in the fire and then Allah will look at us to see did we come out as pure gold or something that was unapproved. And that's what the, de as the definitions show, even in the strongs, it said unapproved, that is rejected by implication, worthless, cast away rejected reprobate that's why paul admonished in uh in one of the i think it's corinthians we said um in the end of a man's work shall the end of a man's work we're gonna see you'll see what it, what it actually was everything's gonna be tried through the fire do you recall that in um is in if any man build on the foundation of christ it's in Corinthians, I think Corinthians chapter three. Talking about the process, this is growth process. Uh, sorry. Okay, it says um, in First Corinthians chapter three, verse ten, it says, "According to the grace of Allah, which is given unto me, a as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another build it thereon, but let every man take heed how we build it thereupon, because the foundation is Christ, and we all have to be mindful how we build upon it. Verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yache Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, for... Oops. Sorry. Verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. See, we all have to go into that fire to see what work we built upon the foundation of Yache. Verse 13, continuing. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So if we work righteousness, building in the fruits, there'll be a reward for that. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. This is where Yahweh's grace is that he checks us even now. Daily, we're going to, that's what we talked about, prove your own selves. As we sit there in self-assessment, Yahweh will teach us about ourselves. So that we'll see, we'll suffer loss. You're like, oh, this is something I was doing wrong. That's what it says. He shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Paul is even telling how you're going to get shown things like you weren't doing right. You're going to suffer the loss, yet you're being saved because he shows you what you were doing wrong so you couldn't do it anymore. So the fire is purging us from the dross and also saving us from our um, faults, things that were not built rightly for his name. So let us be encouraged to, when we're shown something and we suffer that loss, to continue moving forward, knowing that it's for our salvation, taking it with joy when we're shown something that isn't right. Now, there are those who don't endure this process with joy but look for their own way because the process is tough being speaking truth in one heart is tough to see that we didn't have it right that we have to start over that we have to relearn and sadly even the testimony show that Allah understands the, what the choices people make to end up being reprobate 
Uh, can you read an example of this in Hermas, the Shepherd of Hermas, Vision 3, chapter 7, verse 1 to 3, please? 1 to 4, sorry. This is the church speaking with Hermas. The Shepherd of Hermas, Vision 3, chapter 7, verse 1. But the other stones which thou sawest cast far away from the tower and falling into the way and rolling out of the way into the regions where there is no way. These are they that have believed, but by reason of their double heart, they abandoned their true way. Notice, they, he was seeing the tower that these stones were cast, they were cast away far from the tower, falling in to a region where there was no way because Yacha is the only way to enter into the tower, the only way to enter the kingdom. But these stones, they went off where there was no path because just because they decided to turn away from the single path of Yache. And this happens to those who believe, but the double heart causes them to abandon the true way, the true progress and process to attain unto Allah Hayyam. And why did they do this? What caused them to turn away in their double heart? Continue reading, please. Thus thinking that they, excuse me, thus thinking that they can find a better way. They go astray and are sore distressed as they walk about in the regions where there is no way. That's what causes this reprobate mind turning away from the process of Yache. That progress that we have to go through, thinking there's a better way, trying to find an easier route, not right. wanting to deal with the self-examination that's needed. This is what leads us to become reprobate. Right. Finding excuses for your faults. Yes. You know, not wanting to admit your fault, faults, getting lifted up in pride. You know. right. Those are the things that lead you to be a reprobate. Yeah, it may seem small at one moment. But eventually, everything starts adding up, and you continue doing it and doing it and doing it until you're far away from the path. Right. You want me to continue reading? Yeah. Yes, please, because there are those that do that, and then there's also those, as we're going to continue reading about others as well, verse 2 of chapter 7 in Shepherd of Harmon's Vision 3. But they that fall into the fire and are burned, these are they that finally rebelled from the living Allah Hayyam. They completely went away. It, it, that, inner, that inner fire, that affliction within, it got to the point where they, the, they got to the point they didn't just, they just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Completely let it go and turned away from the faith. Continue, please. And they no more entered into their hearts to repent by reason of the lust of their wantonness and of the wickedness which they wrought. So they got so down with their sins and the, their, their, their struggles, instead of enduring and repenting, it got to the point where it's like, this is just who I am. Like, I'm, I can't change. They gave up on the hope that Yahshua can change them but gave into sorrow through their pride and lack of and not humbling themselves to, to endure and keep praying and keep asking him for help and keep working righteousness keep striving against it they didn't endure it they wanted it to be easy and because it's a tough process they rather gave in to their lust and it was their lust that caused them to stop wanting to repent because it says it no more entered into their heart to, to repent by reason of the lust of their wantonness and of the wickedness which they wrought. So their bad works, because they couldn't stop working bad works, they didn't want to repent anymore. The pride. And so we have to be on guard, brothers. This is, this is very easy to fall into. This happens to many of us. And hopefully for those of us that it has happened to, we see it for what it is and get back in the fight. While it's today. Continue, please. Let's learn about more ways of falling into reprobate. But the others, 
which are near the waters, and yet cannot roll into the water? What if thou know who they are? These are they that heard the word, and would be baptized unto the name of Ahia. Then when they called to their remembrance the purity of the truth, they changed their minds and go back again after the evil desires. These are they who, they see it for what it is. Like, see the change that's happening. They're seeing the brothers and sisters growing in the name of Yahweh. They're understanding that this is the true doctrine. The, the scriptures line up. The walk is pure. It's all righteous. Yet, remembering how pure of a walk it is, they don't want to give in to it because they want to still live their life. They don't want to give up their personal desires. Those are the other kinds of reprobates. So she finished explaining the tower. Those are the three types of reprobates that the church explained to Hermas. The ones who hear, they see the righteousness and the purity of the gospel, but for their desire's sake, they turn after their evil desires. And then there are those who they believe, but after being burned, being tried in their affliction, they rebel through their pride and don't want to repent because of the lust and their wantonness in the deeds that they're working. And then there are those who they go, they don't want to go through that process. So they believe there's another way. They turn away from the true doctrine to try to find another way. And by doing that, they get into distress and they get away from the path. This is happening today. The simplicity of having to bear the fruits of the spirit is a major stumbling block. Because the fruits of the spirit deal with what's within us. It's all inward, therefore, it's a true trial, and many fall at the stumbling stone. But we are witnesses that through Yachi, it is possible. It is possible. If we just make the choice and pray and, can, and move forward, just focus on one thing at a time and build in it. And start somewhere and just build and endure. Throughout scriptures, you have these examples of people that were reprobate as well. You have Cain. Sadly, he envied his brother because his works were better than his. Because his brother's works were better than his. And though Cain was admonished, so Cain was given the opportunity to choose what's right. He was shown his fault, and he was given the opportunity to choose what's right. Yet, he did not take the opportunity to repent. And he did what was right in his own eyes and didn't leave off from his envy, which led to him killing his brother. That's, he became reprobate. And then you also have Saul, the former king. He was humble initially. He was given the Holy Spirit. He was humble. He was working righteousness. But he was later found unfit for use through his respect of persons and his rebellion, even though he was given chances, a few chances actually, to repent. David, every time David, he would try to kill David, David would speak to him in meekness. And he would say, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm going to leave you alone. But then he'll, he'll get stirred up again to do it. Instead of taking the opportunity to repent, Saul was found unfit for use. And he's an example of how a person can get the Holy Spirit and lose it. So we can know that the scriptures we read in Sirach are true, that if she, if we don't observe the opportunity, and forsake her way, she'll give us over to our own ruin. So we have examples of reprobate. Now, on the other hand, we have David, who he wasn't reprobate. But through mercy and a perfect heart towards Allah Hayyam, he was found a vessel unto honor after he was brought through the fire. He was found good for the master's use. Can you read First Kings? Chapter 3, verse 14, please. And if thou wilt walk in my ways, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. So Ahiah tested that David walked in his ways, 
And first, can you read also First Kings 15 and 5, please? Because David did that which was right in the eyes of Ahiah, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter with Uriah the Hittite. So, so we have an example of people going through the process in Scripture and get to see the difference of the reprobate as opposed to those who, through self-examination, are found to have Christ in them. David made a mistake just like everyone else. But what did he do? He was shown his sin and he repented. And then he didn't work that evil anymore. He didn't go back and do the same thing. And, and it wasn't the first mistake he made. He made the mistake with Uriah the Hittite and then with numbering the people. But every time he was willing to confess his fault and to go forward, waiting on Allah to provide a, a means out, he didn't just give in to sorrow and give up on serving Allah But he repented with a holy sorrow and focus to work righteousness with zeal and fervent desire and diligence that and also in the midst of all his trials he stayed obedient and most of all merciful toward others mercy appeases a multitude of sins so we have to keep that in mind to be merciful toward others that i have may have mercy upon us can you read uh first maccabees chapter 2 verse 57 please david for being merciful possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom it was for the sake of being merciful. And Peter testified of how mercy covers a multitude of sins so that we could understand how, as we're working to overcome our faults, practice mercy. And that will help deliver us. Um, it was, uh, I think it's Second Peter chapter. Where is that verse at? I don't know where the verse went, man. He said, talking about have charity amongst ourselves. Have fervent charity amongst ourselves. There it is. First Peter chapter four, verse eight. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. So therefore, we encourage as we're going through this process, trying to avoid being reprobate, charity towards one another. Okay. As Yachi even said with that one, the one woman, she came in, she cried on, she cried on his feet, wiped his feet with her hairs and wouldn't stop kissing his feet. He said she was forgiven him much, so she loved him more. And those of us, if we're being honest with ourselves, we know we're being forgiven of a lot. So we have a lot of love to give. And David is, David is, as David was such a great example. Um, not only David was a great example, we also have Moses and Aaron. Though they went through their trials too, because they made mistakes and fell before the congregation. Before the whole congregation, they fell. Yet, they were found merciful and faithful and meek in the midst of their trials, because they did not turn away from Alahayim. They were, they, let's see the scriptures concerning them. Um, Sirach, or the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4, 45, chapter 45, verse 1, verse 4, and verse 6, please. Okay, Sirach, chapter 45, verse 1. And he brought out, and he brought out of him a merciful man which found favor in the sight of all flesh. Even Moses, beloved of Allah and men, whose memorial is blessed. Verse Verse 4. He sanctified him in his faithfulness and meekness and chose him out of all men. Verse 6. He exalted Aaron, an holy man like unto him, 
even his brother of the tribe of Levi. Now, we know the mistakes that these men made. Moses didn't circumcise his son. He, he also he spoke ill-advisedly at the rock in Meribah Kadesh. And we know Aaron. Aaron made the people he threw respect of persons. He made the golden calf. And fell into the issue where him and Miriam, they spoke ill about Moses. And then he was with Moses at the rock of Meribah Kadesh and fell into that mistake with them as well. I mean, with him as well. We've seen the mistakes that these people made, but yet I accounted them holy because they didn't forsake the walk. They didn't forsake the progress, the journey that we have to go through. They didn't get lifted up in pride when they were shown their faults. All right. But they continued in mercy. And you can see the growth. If you look at, if you read, for those of you who read the Old Testament, you can see the growth that these people went through. From David, for example, if you remember, David had the issue where the one guy, what's his, Nabal, didn't want to give him any food. All right. And he was going to destroy him. But then look at his growth in mercy where Saul is trying to kill him and he wouldn't even fight back. The man, the one Benjamite man was talking a bunch of trash about him, talking real bad about him when his son Absalom had took his wives and he got kicked out of the kingdom. Yet David didn't requite him evil. He didn't render him evil for evil and revile back at him. But he committed himself unto the Lord. He said, if Ahaya permitted, Ahaya permitted him to speak that way, let him speak. May Ahaya look upon my affliction have mercy upon me. So you can see the growth in people. You have Aaron where he made a mistake with the golden calf. But then later on, the, um, what was it? The sons of Korah that were trying to contend with him for the priesthood and if you notice Aaron didn't say a word he sat there quietly and just waited on Allah and Moses did the thing with the with the everybody had to get a rod and to see which one butted so you can see the growth that these people went through for understanding of how they avoided being reprobate by enduring the process in meekness and that there Getting a look at their examples helps us understand that the righteous have a different mindset and approach towards the faith. That's what differentiates the righteous from the reprobate. Let's look at Psalms of Solomon chapter 3 for a view of the mindset of the righteous so that we may put on this mindset in verse 3 to 10, please. Psalms of Solomon chapter 3 verse 3. The righteous remember Ahaya at all times. With thanksgiving and declaration of the righteousness of Ahaya's judgments. All right. Staying thankful. That's a key for a righteous mindset. All right. The righteous despise of not the chastening of Ahaya. His will is always before Ahaya. There, the, uh, uh, we're always looking for Ahaya to show us something so that we can grow. We're not resistant to getting chastised, but willing to see what are we doing, willing for growth, willing for, um, what is it? Criticism or correction? Is that the right word? Um, critique. Both, both critique, criticism, <laughs> criticism at the same, yeah. Okay. I'm always looking for that because Ahaya's will is before us. We're looking for what's right in his sight. We're not looking for our own desire. All right, continue, please. The righteous stumbleth and holdeth a higher righteous. We don't look. When we, fall, when we stumble, we count a higher righteous in it. We don't make an excuse. Right. We don't look at it like, like we got set up, like this ain't right. Like, why is Allah Hayyam doing this to me? No, we're like, oh, Ahai is righteous. I messed up. I did commit iniquity. I'm not doing that anymore. Deliver me from that. And then when we fall, what's our mindset in the midst of the fall as well? Please continue reading. He falleth and looketh out for what Allah would do to him. Even in a fall, we confess our fault and look for what Allah would do. We wait patiently for what his will is. 
not given into sorrow, but wait, confess and wait for his deliverance. Pray that he have mercy. And whatever he brings to pass, we accept it as just and good and right. David is the example. David made a mistake and slept with Bathsheba. And then Ahia gave him the judgment that Ahia is going to embarrass him in front of everyone. David didn't speak ill. He accepted it as right and good, and he endured the trial, waiting for Allahim's deliverance. And we see what the end of his matter was. He was, Ahia delivered him and, and exalted him again. Continue, please. To seek about whence his deliverance will come. That's important, too, because in this journey, we don't take matters into our own hands. Even as David didn't take it into his own hands and kill Saul, but he waited on Allah. So we seek, we seek for when Ahaya is going, where his deliverance is going to come from. Patiently waiting for him to help. Continue, please. The steadfastness of the righteous is from Allah, their deliverer. And we don't get to thinking it's something we're doing. We understand and keep staying thanksgiving knowing that it's Allah Hayyam that's doing it. When we're being prospered, when we're having, like say we're having a good week or a good day and things are going well, we're walking in the fruits, it's nothing to glory in ourselves about. We know that this is coming from Allah Hayyam. He's being gracious unto us. That's why we walk around giving praise, being thankful. Continue, please. The Lord is not in the house of the righteous sent upon sin. And why would they not lodge in the house of the righteous sin upon sin? Why would he not compound, keep sinning back to back to back? Why? How, how does this happen? Continue, please. Or keep justifying his sins where they just start adding up. Right. The righteous continually search of his house to remove utterly all iniquity done by him in error. That is how we keep from adding sin upon sin and just and self-justification by searching our own house complete con, um, searching our own house continually that constant self-examination to make sure there's no iniquity done in us in error again we want to remove it like hey you showed me a sin you showed me an error let me search my house to make sure that thing is removed and i don't fall to that again all right that's how we avoid that and sin upon sin. Continue, please. He maketh atonement for sins of ignorance by fasting and afflicting his soul. That, now, that fasting of righteousness, when we guard in ourselves and paint up, we're self examined to see, hey, you showed me something, let me make sure that doesn't happen again. That's a fast of righteousness. You're weaning that thing off to make sure it has no place in your, in your, in your, in your body, in your system. That's the affliction that we go through and that to, to bring our soul in subjection unto Allah Hayyam. And that makes an atonement for our sins. By not doing it anymore, it atones for our sins. And how does Ahaya view this? Continue, please. He maketh atonement for sins of, excuse me, I'm sorry. And Ahaya counted guiltless every pious man in his house. There we see how David was counted guiltless, how Moses and Aaron was counted holy and faithful and meek because they made atonements for their sins of ignorance by work in righteousness, by fasting a fast of righteousness, afflicting their soul from evil so they can work that which is good. We have the same opportunity. This is what we have to do so that we can be counted righteous and not found reprobate. Because on the other hand, the sinner that doesn't have the right mindset the sinner goes into a hole when he when he sins and beats himself down goes into sorrow and depression and turns away let's read um about the mindset of the sinner so that we can know what to how not to react and how not to operate psalms of solomon chapter 3 verse 11 through 13 please the sinner stumbleth and curses his life. The day when he was begotten and his mother's travail. This is where that, oh, woe, this is that woe is me mindset. 
I can't get it right. Why was I born? Why he, why doesn't he just take me away? This is too much. Things are too tough. I can't do this. I'm trying and I can't get it done. I've been praying. Why ain't it working? This is the mindset of the sinner. This is that reprobate mind that sees the, that that is burned by the fire and stops repenting because of their lust. This is where we don't want to be found, brothers and sisters. That sorrow that, that sorrow that we're tempted to fall into, that's actually an evil spirit. We're supposed to take all our trials with joy, count it out joy when we fall into diverse temptations. So we may know through scripture it's not right to go off into sorrow when we get shown our faults. But the sinner, through that sorrow and giving up and that, that negative mindset, what does it cause the sinner to do? When we continue reading, please. He addeth sin to sins while he liveth. All right. So he doesn't take the time to examine himself. But he just gets into more sorrow and continues being downcast and just keeps falling. All right. Continue. You get sorrowful. And then yeah. you're like, well, I've already sinned. I might as well sin again. I might as well go ahead and do that too. Right. And that's adding sin to sin. He falleth. Verily grievous is his fall. And riseth no more. The destruction of the sinner is forever. What makes his fall so grievous? What what makes it to where? Because the scriptures we know the scriptures say a, a just man falleth seven times and get it back up. But what is it that causes the sinner to fall so grievously and not rise again? We've seen that the righteous get back up through meekness, through mercy, through faith. But for the sinner, pride makes one unable to recover. And eventually be found reprobate. Can you read Ecclesiasticus chapter 3, verse 27 to 28, please? An obstinate heart shall be laden with sorrows, and the wicked man shall reap sin upon sin. An obstinate heart and wickedness. Continue, please. And the punishment of the proud, there is no remedy. For the plan of wickedness hath taken root in him. The plan for this. so the proud, the proud, there's no remedy. There's no getting up from the fall for the proud because that plant of wickedness, which is lust, according to the um, testimonies, is taken root. Their desire is more than the desire to change, the will to endure the process. This is given us understanding of what has been ailing us this whole time as we've been trying to change. We have to avoid an obstinate heart. We don't want to be obstinate. Don't be resistant, but be willing and acquiescent onto the change. What is the definition of obstinate? I have an idea, but I won't. Do you know it off the, t off the top I, of your head? I, I get it real quick. I won't give them. All right. You want the uh, yeah, that both. Okay. It's uh eight seventy one eighty six. It's severe. In various applications, churlish, cruel, grievous, hard or hard hearted. Hard-hearted, hard-hearted, not willing to be corrected, not wanting to be wrong. It's pretty close to stiff-necked and stubborn. Stubbornness, a very evil spirit. Not willing to change one's ways, not wanting to be renewed and made anew and willing to go through the process. That obstinate heart will be laden with sorrows. Because the afflictions are going to continue to burn. 
and it won't purge. It's just going to expose the iniquity more. That that leads me to another thing. Uh, a lot of people fall into being reprobate because it wasn't shown to them. Elohim didn't, Elohim didn't reveal it to me, so I, I'm waiting on Elohim to reveal it to me because what you're saying, uh, I don't know if it's true. And what happens okay. is, is they fall into being reprobate because they're stubborn. They're stubborn. That's happened to That's consistent. Right. That's happened to many of the kings. We see that in the, in the book of Kings. Jeremiah come to tell the kings and the people to do certain things. And because they, they sadly, they literally asked Jeremiah to inquire of Elohim for them and then said they wasn't going to do what he said to do because they right. said he wasn't telling the truth. That, that's true. It happens today, that pride of wanting to have that direct relationship, wanting to be exalted within oneself. Alahayim speaks for those who don't know scripturally. Alahayim speaks in 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 6. It speaks by dream, vision, prophet, or urim. So it, you, there are things you may be shown that it may, it may not get shown directly to you. Ahayim might send someone to tell it to you. So we understand we definitely have to be mindful and take heed. And those that are sensitive to the, to the spirit, and walking in meekness, they'll know when Ahai is sending his word unto them. Ahai will not forsake our broken heart, our contrite spirit. So let's all put, run away from pride, dear brothers and sisters. That's not the way of the just man. The just man is in soul. Though he falls as he's being taught the word of righteousness, through his experiences, he's going to get back up because he's walking in meekness in an honest and good heart and being patient. And he's going to confess his sin to receive that mercy because he sincerely wants to get it right and bear the fruits of repentance. Uh, can you read Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16, please? For a just man falls seven times and rises up again but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Right, and we know, we know the difference now. The wicked fall into mischief through pride and obstinate heart, stubbornness of heart. But the just man is going to get back up through meekness, through confessing his fault. Uh, and Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 shows these things. Can you read that, please? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That was that's an important scripture for our growth. Don't seek to cover it by justifying it or hiding it in one's bosom. But for things that happen in secret, confess it unto Allah. Or and if you have one counselor of a thousand, that one brother that can be that you can confide in, go talk to the brother about it. Hopefully Mahaya help bring some edification on how you can overcome it. Confess that thing and get it out from you. And let it not weigh you down so you may find mercy. And David was an example of all these things because Nathan came and prophet, speaking of, now you mentioned, Zach, well, how the mindset where people say that, you know, like, I don't, that can't be right because Allah didn't reveal it to me, right? right? David, we all know the glory I have bestowed upon David. Yet, David received knowledge from the prophets, from people who Ahaya sent, things that were not revealed to him directly. Right. Nathan came and showed him his fault, and he didn't lift himself up against David, even though he was king and already had all the glory of the people. He, David David, didn't, when Nathan, uh, he mm -hmm. didn't even lift himself up when Gad the Seer came to him for the first time. He didn't even know who Gad the Seer was. Right, brought him straight in the house, didn't he? All right. So he was an example. Nathan showed him what he did wrong. The first thing he said was, I sinned. He confessed his fault. No excuses. 
and that was what prospered him to be forgiven so that we can have the example of how we may be forgiven. Can you read that Psalms 32 and 5, please? I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto a higher, and thou forgave it the iniquity of my sin. Hello. Think about it. Meditate on that, brothers and sisters. You have also the 12 apostles, so we can understand this wasn't just something from back in the day, because we know we talked about David a lot, but there's also the apostles too. They were tried and made mistakes too, until, the, until they became perfect, but not all were reprobate. The 11 attained unto perfection by withstanding the trial. Can you read John chapter 6, verse 70 to 71, please? Yahweh answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is the devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the, being one of the twelve. So we have very straight understanding that many are called, but few are chosen. Judas, now speaking of the all twelve of the apostles, they all made mistakes along the way. They all said things that they shouldn't have said. They all did things that they shouldn't have did. They all ran off and left Yache in the right when you know they came to get him that night. Even Peter lied a couple of times. Yep, Peter lied a couple of times and said some things that he shouldn't have said. Right. Talking in his emotions. Right. Yet Judas did not withstand the trial. As opposed, now it's good to compare those two, Peter and Judas, two Levites. Both make mistakes, and we get to see how one is found reprobate and one's not. Both Peter and Judas made mistakes, but Judas was not able to withstand the trial as opposed to Peter, who was shown to have made more mistakes than Judas along the journey. Yet through Yache, he was kept unattained unto perfection. So you can see it was happening even in the New Testament. He made mistakes after Yache. Yes, he did. Paul had to um, correct, correct him in meekness in the book of Galatians. Right. Yache, even when Peter, the day when Peter was about to die, Yache had to come and <laughs> show him to turn back because the Peter, the people would tell him, well, he didn't actually do something wrong that day. Right. He didn't do anything wrong. I can't, I apologize. He didn't do anything wrong that day. The people just, pressing him not to go because they wanted to kill him. And Yache came to show him that you got to go be crucified. And he went uh, willingly. So he, he didn't do anything wrong that day. But yes, with Paul, yeah, he had to grow there to see that it was, it was building up. And this was Peter, who the foundation of the church was laid upon. The keys to the church was given to, I'm sorry. And so you can see that yet he wasn't found reprobate because he continued he didn't seek to justify himself. He continued moving forward, right? So avoid the reprobate mind by focusing on overcoming ourselves, as we talked about in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, so that we can avoid hypocrisy by, by not comparing ourselves amongst ourselves, as 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 shows, and also... Let's endure these trials from our hearts with cheerfulness. As Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1 to 5 shows, doing this with cheerfulness, keeping the word with a good heart and patience, as Luke chapter 8, verse 15 shows, as we are being changed in our minds and our deeds through the yoke of meekness that we're called on through, through Yache, as Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30 shows. This is that process to avoid being reprobate. Can you read Luke chapter 8, verse 15, please? Sure. But that on the good ground are they, which in a good, a honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. That's key for us. Doing it in patience and being honest within ourselves. That's key to in making our heart good toward Allah Hayyam. Can you also read 1 Corinthians 
first Thessalonians, I'm sorry, first Thessalonians chapter five, verse 15 to 19, please. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever That's not a good that. example. Yep, but, sorry. Okay. We don't but render evil unto any man. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I lived you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we know Yahshua, we talked about in the beginning that Yahshua didn't render evil unto any, so we know that's not what we're called unto. Continue, please. Sorry. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Right. It's not just among the brothers. It's not only among those who believe in Yahshua, but to all men. All right. Because right? we love our neighbor and our enemy. Without impartiality or hypocrisy. Continue, please. Rejoice evermore. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Amen. That's essential for us because we know who's delivering us from ourselves. Continue, please. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of Elohim in Christ Yahshua concerning you. In everything give thanks. So whether it be something good or bad, give thanks. Whether we be showing a fault or get or see that I have prospered us in something, give thanks. That's right. And these types of works, what the, these works keep us from doing from quench, quench not the mm -hmm. spirit. She won't leave us if we walk in this way. Because we're taking her, her chastisement with joy. She wouldn't be she wouldn't desire to leave us in such a way if we're operating in such a way. Now, the things that do quench the spirit are things like corrupt communication. That's what we, we don't, we curse in or have foul language or, you know, derogatory speech, the corrupt communication, bitterness being unforgiven or holding grudges or resentful, clamor, anger, grudging, wrath, evil speaking, Sadness, we talked about sorrow, staying away from being sorrowful, and malice, being vindictive or using guile. These things grieve the spirit. Can you read, um, continue in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 to 22, please? Can I touch on something before you go? Of course. Uh, Thessalonians 5 and 19 says, quench not the spirit. And we know that the the Holy Spirit comes, or of course we go through the, the fire baptism, meaning we have to purge the things within us so that we can be cleansed, right? We have to come out like gold tried in the fire. Now, mm -hmm. it's interesting they said quench not the spirit because when you quench something, you extinguish it, all right? Mm. Now, what happens is if, if you extinguish a fire before gold is fully refined, part of the gold or whatever it is before it went into the refinery is not complete. So if you quench the spirit while you're going through the process or while you're going through the progress, then you're not complete. I made it. On, you didn't make it onto perfection. Right. Stay in that's why you have to endure the trial. Stay in the fire. Stay in the Persian until the master brings you out. Because he knows when you've reached the point of perfection. He knows when the gold is completely pure. All right. And that brings new understanding to waiting on Allah. <laughs> that's right. Thank you. Praise Allah. That was good edification. And uh, with said, that, despise not one. prophesying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> despise not prophesying. Uh, First Thessalonians 5 and 20. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Amen. And that's a that's 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 evidence even with with David when Brother Costas was using David as an example when the prophets came to him whether he knew them or not 
when they came and they, they spoke to him, he didn't despise what was good because he's seen, oh, they're giving me correction. They see, Elohim sent them to tell me something that I did that I need to correct. That was good to David. So we have to, we have to re-examine and examine ourselves to see what is good in our sight. What is good in the sight of Elohim? And if they don't align, then we have a problem. That means that we're going off of the path. That's right. Take the time to find out what's good and hold fast to it. All right. And in finding what's good, what's that going to lead you to do? Verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Now you can differentiate the two. This is the great process we have, the opportunity we have in Christ Yache, and we take it all with cheer. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, please. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Amen. Stay in that fire and let the spirit not quench until Allah brings us unto perfection through our Lord Yahshe. Let us you know, go through you know this process so that we may be. Ex mm -hmm. You know who was a great example of that? Uh, go ahead, sure. Joe. He couldn't get out of the fire until Allah ordained it. And he had to take it cheerfully. He couldn't get down in sorrow or he would have. He would have fell off of the path. Right. He was a great example. He was the example of patience in the testimonies, actually. That was his testimony, the patience of Job. It was gracious to leave that testimony for us to see how to endure in the midst of it all. So let us, with all these testimonies and understanding of the gospel and in the law, let us go forward and be, exam be acceptable for use unto our Allah, vessels unto honor, and not be found reprobate. There's admonition for us. Can you read Hermas, Shepherd of Hermas, Vision 4, Chapter 3, Verse 4, please? And the golden part are ye that have escaped from this world. For as the gold is tested by the fire and is made useful, so ye also that dwell in it are being tested in yourselves. Ye then that abide and pass through the fire will be purified by it. For as the gold loses its dross, so ye also shall cast away all sorrow and tribulation and shall be purified, and shall be useful for the building of the tower. Amen. Amen. The dross on the gold is, is synonymous to sorrow and tribulation. This is why we have to count it all cheer. Stay in joy so that the sorrow will go away. Tribulation will go away because we get closer and closer to Yache through through joy and understanding the process that we're going through. This is our calling. That's chastisement is so that we can be an offering worthy and blameless unto our Allah. Can you read the wisdom of Solomon chapter three, verse four to six, please? For though they be punished in the sight of men. Yet is their hope full of immortality. Amen. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For Allah improved right. them and found them worthy for himself. Amen. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. Amen. 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 Yeah, how you do his good pleasure. Hope that's the end and hope this was edifying, brothers and sisters, and I hope everyone's encouraged 
to avoid being reprobate in these evil times. I keep you all. Uh, we are doing, we are coming with the update on the um, Day of Atonement. So definitely look out for that. And uh, just to reiterate, the Day of Atonement is the third day of the week. It is what the, yeah. what the, what the Monday night? Monday night. Yeah, Monday night. On right. to, and it ends on Tuesday night. So the night of 9-14-2020 is when it starts, and it ends on 9-15-2020 when night comes. All right. All right. So there's no food, no water, um, and we will give the rest of the edifications in the video when we post it. All right. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shalom.